everyone. It's old Guardian here. In this Walker Rumble Heroic Campaign Guide, I'm going to take a look at Jindo the Hexer in Strangleton Vale. And I have to say, Jindo the Hexer is a brutal fight. This is more difficult than any of the heroics from the previous three zones, because Jindo's ability, Jindo is going to mass polymorph your stuff. So whenever your characters cross this line to the, to the arid terrain, then Jindo can cast polymorph spell on them, turning them into chickens. And then those chickens will just go ahead and attack Jindo, even though they don't deal any damage, and then they will die off. The polymorph spell is... It's an area of effect spell. It's centered around a mini. So if you have a mini here, then anything that's really close to it is going to get polymorphed, but something that's a little bit further away will not get polymorphed. And it also has a small cooldown. It's not a very long cooldown, but it has a small cooldown. So what you can do is you can bait that spell, for example, with unbound minis, sending something weak first, and then get that polymorph spell out of the way, and then push your main assault. However, the cooldown is not very big, so for example, the time it takes to walk from this tower to that tower, you pop one cooldown and the other might just come up before you get the other tower down, so yeah, it's still going to be really tricky. As for the map itself, there are three towers here in this pattern, then there's gold vein over there, gold vein over here, chest here, and to chest here. And this is largely a contest of denying Jindo resources. You have to be very proactive in getting chests, in getting gold veins. Then what I like to do, I like to take the center tower first. And that center tower pretty much has to be taken very early in the game, or I just find that I, I don't have the pressure. So take the center tower first. After that, you can either take both of the other towers and make two-sided pushes at Jindo, or you can take just one of the towers. I would prefer this one because it's on the side of the chest. And then just make pushes here and then use unbound minis. And even minis coming from here to this area. So Jindo will pull him off here and then you can try to attack. That sort of attack. But if you're doing this with no talents, like I did, and with even leveled minis, then in practice you will not have power to overwhelm Jindo until overtime. So it's gonna get a little bit hectic. And this is the arm that I used for Jindo. Works with all families, works with all leaders. I never deployed my leader. I don't have any talents here. So I have Stonehoof Thorn, Bat Rider, Griffin Rider, Pyromancer, Safe Pilot, and a Dark Fire Miner in this army. And this army is designed to both counter Jindo's stuff and then apply pressure. Because Stonehoof Thorn is great against Ogre Mages, Stonehoof Thorn is great against the regenerating trolls Jindo has, Stonehoof Thorn is good at pushing towers, and Stonehoof Thorn is good at actually dealing damage to Jindo. Then I have the Bat Rider. Bat Rider is great. If the troll, the regenerating troll, if it's otherwise a little preoccupied, then the flame pool is going to make short work of it. Flame pool is also wonderful against the safety bubbled murlocs that Jindo has, and in general it's just great. You know, deals with raptors to can can shoot the raider from above, can take towers, what is there not to like? Griffin Rider, because I need to keep the curve low, because it's a contest for resources, and some of my resources are constantly being spent on polymorphs. So Griffin Rider can handle Bat Riders, and it also adds a little bit of fire support to other against other threats, including shooting at Warzone Raiders and shooting at Raptors from above. Pyromancer is one of my main damage dealers, deals a good chunk of damage, area damage too, good against Raptors, just generally a very sweet unit, also good for pushing damage to Jindo and the towers. Safe Pilot, Safe Pilot takes chests, Safe Pilot kills the trolls while they're on their way, and Safe Pilot just adds damage here and there. And Dark Hour Miner can mine some of the gold veins, because it's really important to not let Jindo mine very much. So my regular miner alone is not going to be able to mine enough. Jindo is going to find some openings. Dark Hour Miner is also good at taking chests. The chest really close to Jindo is something that you really want to take with the Safe Pilot, because Jindo is going to pull him off the mini probably immediately. So Safe Pilot pops the chest open, gives you the gold, gets polymorphed, doesn't matter. If you try to take it with Dark Eye Miner, then it just doesn't work nearly as well. This was the lowest level arm that I was able to do this with without any talents, it's 13.9. But as I mentioned, this is a very brutal fight, and I would ideally want to have at least all four of my main damage dealers. The Tauren, the Bat Trident, the Pyromancer, and the Safe Pilot at 14 or above before really making serious attempts at this. It can be done with a little bit less, but it's really, really hard and will take many, many attempts, unless you're like super good at this game. If you had talents, then I would probably add Whelp X with the Flame Burst talent. 
I'm not sure I didn't have appropriate level Welbex to test this fight with, so I would probably add them instead of the Griffin Rider, because those Welbex can then, they can hurt Jindo, they can take towers, they would just add a lot of value, but only if they had Flame Burst talent. But even a talentless team can get this done, and this is what it all looks like in action. Okay, Jindo, here we go. Let's first take a look at Blackrock, although family doesn't matter because I don't use the family for anything. And here we want to grab that chest early. Storm of Thorn is great at grabbing that chest early. And then we want to make a strong push for the middle tower. So here we managed to get the chest and we're sending some units from the other side, some units from the other side. Dropping in a safe pilot over there. There's a troll, but troll is dead. And Torrent, Torrent is just really, really good against these towers. So now my first push was successful and I have the middle tower. That's that's the starting point. That's something that has to happen for me to actually win this. Pretty much. I think I won this also when I got this with the second push, but yeah, it's it's so much harder. And now that we have one tower, we're going to, we're trying to bait a little bit of polymorph effects there. And I'm also a little bit concerned about that push, but Pyromancer has good area damage and will handle that one. Alright, so my push at the tower, the bait was successful, I managed to bait the polymorph so that my push was able to hit the tower um, almost successfully. Yeah, we got pretty close there. And then, let's see, well, this tiny, tiny miss. And now there's that bat rider. Yeah, that bat rider is going to cause me some problems now, I also managed to get polymorphed, but hey, miner survived, so we have gold. And when we have gold and we have the center tower, we have time, we have hope. It's probably only going to be at overtime anyway, when I really get to make a good push at Chindo. The point is that before overtime starts, I have to get into a good position in order to start the final push. All right, there's an Ogre Mage. Torren is a perfect counter to Ogre Mage. And there's that Regenerating Troll again. A regenerating Troll can solo towers, but this time we have... We have just enough troops here to take it down. On this one, actually, because this army is 14.1, I think, so my towers are 15, so then a regenerating troll cannot solo it. But a level 14 tower it can solo, but there's also footage of a level 14 tower clear of this. It can also be done. Although level 15 towers are truly an asset in this one, just because of the way the additional damage works. And it rounds up, so 14.1 rounds up to 15. There's a little bit of mining that should be done, but I'm now... I'm actually maybe a little bit over-enthusiastic here trying to get that push in. Because I don't think I can yet. I should have probably just mined, because there's a lot of mining that has been undone. Now I get at least some mining done. Yeah, <laughs> Tor and Charge Jindo. Because it's polymorphed, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a mistake on my part. Should have first baited the polymorph, remember, first bait the polymorph, then put more expensive units. It's it's not super simple, but that's the way it should be done. Taking chests is... Dark Eye Miner is good at taking chests. The regular miner is much worse. Now I'm trying to bait the polymorph here. Let's bait the polymorph, yes, finally. Finally got it done properly. And then the stone hoof going for the, going for the chest. A little bit too slow there, but I have the chest from the uh, bottom, but no, now my Dark Eye Miner met the Warzone Raider, and that's not going to work out. And as you can see, the cooldown is not very long. I have chickens again. And now that Warzone Raider attacking my base is really inconvenient. I need to do something about it. And I would also need to mine a bit. No, a little bit, a little bit sloppy play here at some points because there's so much mining left to be done. In lower level clear, it's even more important to, even more important to mine. I mean, lower level clear. This 14.1 army, I also have done it with 13.9. When your towers are 14, then they cannot defend nearly as well. That's the thing. But now it's overtime, and we're trying to bait polymorphs, and we're trying to push against Jindo. We're doing our best, we're sending the unbounce in, we're sending troops from the one tower that we control, and it's just all out assault at this point. Before overtime, it's really hard to have enough gold to do this, but on overtime, boom, victory. But I also did a little bit harder with Horde with 13.9 army, so now my towers are only 14s. 
And that is going to make a big difference, because now a regenerating troll can solo a tower. A uh, level 15 tower can just hold back a regenerating troll, but a level 14 tower against a level 14 regenerating troll cannot. So, again, we do the same. Big early push. Try to get the value. See the flaming pool. Flaming pool from the Batrider just dealing all that damage to regenerating troll. That was beautiful. We grabbed the chest. We tried to bait the polymorph, but my bait was a little bit unsuccessful this time because actually my army got polymorphed. But it's okay because I got the center tower. That's the that's the key starting point. You want the center tower. And here I was again, hey, the cooldown is not that long. The cooldown was already over. Wasted a torrent there. Could have could have sent something cheaper there first, get that polymorphed, then get in the torrent. And I probably would have been able to take the tower here. But be that as it may, now I will need to get some resources. Sending a miner to open a chest is a little awkward, though it's going to take ages for that miner to actually open the chest. But it is what we've got so far. So now I want that chest with the safe pilot. And safe pilot will bait the polymorph. Here comes the poly. And boom, in we go, 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 go. Hammer time. It's it's time. We are, we are in a hurry here. If we want to get this done, we need to get it done quickly. Because, yep, there's some chickens again. But not all of Not everything turned into a chicken. Chicken still tanked the tower. Pyromancer was able to shoot at the tower. So we have two towers. All right. We're making progress. Steady. Steady progress towards the goal. And again, I probably won't have enough power to truly push before it's overtime. So the consideration here is mainly... Do I go for the second tower or do I try to make some preliminary pushes and hope to hold, hold the defensive line until overtime begins? Here I decided, okay, I have 1 minute and 20 until overtime. I might as well go for the other tower. Just make my base really safe because now my base is a level 14 and level 14 base is much more vulnerable to Jindo's assaults than a level 15 base. So we're trying to, trying to get a tower attack in. And yeah, it's hard, but it's sort of working. Well, luckily the Ogre Mage abandoned the base, which means that the Lone Bat Rider is going to be able to get some flaming pools over there. Now the Ogre Mage does pose a threat to my base, but yeah, and I also got polymorphed once again. <laughs> Torrent decides to pick up the chest first. Hey, yeah, I like... Ogre mage shooting at your base, who cares about that, there's a chest to be picked up. But anyway, we're slowly grinding our way towards taking that second tower. Now I'm shooting at the second tower from two different angles, which means that even if Jindo goes for a polymorph, and he does, he only gets the polymorph one mini. And now we're getting close to overtime, I have a good supply of gold, and I control all the bases, which means that I will be able to make a two-sided push at Jindo. So here we go, we're going to try that. And overtime is just about to begin. It is sometimes hard to keep Jindo in his own area. More polymorphing. I really need to mine gold and I need to get the push going. So here we go, here we go, here we go. Push, push, push from both sides. I'm trying to get... Trying to get the push in from both sides. A couple of minis got polymorphed, but as you can see, it does not polymorph everything even on the same side. And now just hitting Jindo from left, hitting Jindo from right. 30 seconds remaining. Now it starts to look like I'm going to lose the base on the left. There, there were so many minis going for that base that I have now abandoned that base. And I'm focusing completely on getting the push ended from the right side and Jindo does fall. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.